Hey everyone, I'm Dominic, and welcome to Going Headless with Nox and Dado. Today we're going to look over a few things that we learn here at Snipcart when building our new Gemstack website. But first, a little bit about me. I'm a developer at Snipcart. I also had the chance previously to build quite a few websites with the fine folks at Bluetooth. I also really enjoy some pineapple on my pizza. I'm sorry about that. While I had a lot of experience building websites the traditional way, it was my first time trying out Nux for a real project. So today we're going to go over our main stack choices. We're going to take a look at some performance considerations. We're also going to see how working with TypeScript and GraphQL can enable some great developer experience. When deciding on a new stack for our website, we have to take into account our reality. We are a product company, not a web agency. That meant we only needed to build a single site, not a hundred. That can have a big impact on your decisions because while it can be worthwhile to build some of your own tools yourself for multiple sites, it rarely makes sense for a single use. This is why in our case, we wanted to use tools that would allow us to skip most of the startup cost of creating a website. We also wanted to delegate the maximum we could to services in order to keep focusing on what we do best, our shopping cart. In summary, our main concerns were, we need to go live quickly and be as low maintenance as possible going forward. It also needs to be fast, both actual and perceived performance, that translated into a statically generated Gemstack website built with Nux, Dado, and hosted on Netlify. I can't lie, we're also pretty excited to try this modern approach that we wrote so much about on our blog. The team was already experienced with Vue, since most of our front end here at Snapcart is built with it, and for static site generation, Nux was a no-brainer companion for how much it handles out of the box. As for the CMS, again, to keep things as low maintenance as possible, we went for a hosted solution. That had a spot-on mix of features, pricing, and user-friendly interface. There's a lot of great players in the field and everyone covers the most needed features. So I'd advise taking a good look at their pricing model to see which one suits your needs the best. And also look at all the extra things each of those CMS does. Does it allow enough collaborators, multiple environments? Does it come with utilities for your front-end library of choice? How do they handle dynamic content like editing block and rich content? Another thing to consider is the match between your goals and their product vision. Some headless CMS or content as a service are really focused on being completely agnostic of the platform where the data will be outputted. This is great and allows to provide data to websites, mobile apps, and internal platforms all with the same service. But there are always compromises that need to be made for adding flexibility. And it's easy to imagine that those compromises might not benefit us when all we want is to build a website. That's why we wanted an headless CMS, yes, but one that was still built for website first. That, while being able to be used for other things at websites, still included a built-in way to include links, specific fields for SEO and meta tags. Being able to have multiple environment, for example, dev and production environments in Dado was a great bonus that was not offered by a lot of other CMSs at this right point. Being able to have multiple environments, for example, dev and productions in Dado was a great bonus that was not offered by a lot of other CMSs at this price point anyway. Their solution for dynamic content with their structured text field is very powerful. It basically combines the concept of predefined blocks with rich checks in the same field. Being used daily by our marketing team, the overall user experience of the CMS was also a big factor. They do seem quite happy with the upgrade. When it was time to think about hosting, we immediately had Versal and Netlify in mind. As you probably know, you can't really go wrong with any of those choice. I won't go into details today comparing both of these, but we do have a great article on our blog that does just that. You should check it out. In the end, we went with Netlify since we already had a few projects running there and we could also see ourselves uh, using some of their add-ons features in the near future. Our previous website was built on a traditional stack and was suffering from poor performance, which Core Web Vitals reports highlighted even more. While it's completely possible to have an optimal website 
with a traditional stack, it often requires a lot more effort. This was work that Nuxt allowed us to forego by including all of the best practices for best performance right out of the box. I'm talking about static site generation, client-side routing, smart prefetching, and so on. Another critical part of web performance is assets. Dato provides a CDN for both images and videos. They also provide a few Vue.js utilities, like a responsive image component. This allows us to fetch images quickly and at the right size and display them using best practices like SRC set and sources without much effort. Overall, the results were night and day both for performance tests and for real life usage. On Slowdot, the page transitions were almost instant. A small heads up, Nux still needs to bundle the view library so your site can function properly. This is not a problem in and of itself, but can cause a few points to be lost in Lighthouse on mobile especially. Making sure you and other stakeholders are aware of this when starting the project should help manage expectations. Nux3 aims at even further client bundle reductions, so this is worth keeping an eye on. Something else that grabbed my attention is the Astro framework, which aims to strip all non-essential JavaScript. While TypeScript is far from necessary when building a website, if you either need to maintain it for a while or if multiple devs are going to work on it, I would encourage you to include it in your project. In addition to the extra confidence that TypeScript gives, it also allows new devs or a future you to get up to speed with the code base much faster. One blind spot, however, is all the data coming from external services. In the case of a Jamstack website, that can be quite the vast majority of your data. This is where GraphQL Code Generator comes in handy. This tool allows devs to transform GraphQL types and operations into something else. In our case, that would be TypeScript types and interfaces. Here's a high-level summary of how this works. You provide the URL where your GraphQL schema can be obtained, your CMS GraphQL API endpoint, basically. You can also specify the queries and fragments in your code base to have this tool generate a tailor-made SDK for your queries. You use the CLI to generate the types and watch for changes. And there you have it, an end-to-end -end typed website that is a breeze to work with. That's it for today. I hope that gives you a bit of insight into the process of going headless with Nux and Dato. If you want to learn more on this or many other topics, we post weekly articles to help developers grow on our blog. Thank you all.